we have, we're excited to introduce that we created the first MLK essay contest. It was available to high school students throughout Story County. And even more excited, we received eight essays. Not one, eight. So we are so excited for that. And uh, our first place winner is named Mia Weeks. She's a ninth grader at Ames High School. And uh, she will receive a $100 gift card for her essay. Second place was Hannah Olson, who's also a, uh, who is a ninth grader but is homeschooled. She will receive a $75 gift card. And Jennifer Newman, uh, our third place winner, will, is a 10th grader at Ames High School. She will receive a $50 gift card. But with the excitement of having eight uh, essays entered, the committee, along with the sponsor uh, support, was able to give gift cards to the remaining essay contest entries, and they will each receive a $25 gift card. And that is Julia Marks, Claire Landum, Jenya Collins, uh, Angela Chin, and Charles Oreo. So let's give a round of applause virtually in here for all of the students who submitted an essay for our first essay contest. We are so excited. But before we leave tonight, we're going to have Mia Weeks uh, read her essay for you uh, for our program. We are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality tied in a single garment of destiny. King's assertion of mankind's intricately connected fate is particularly striking now, perhaps even more than ever before. Although advancements in science and technology have allowed our world to become increasingly interconnected, the same strands that fuse us together as one human race are tying us up, coiling and contorting to allow for the sharp needles of racism and injustice to rip us apart. We need to untangle ourselves from these nets of division and begin to work with our brothers and sisters to make real our bid for a triumphant intertwined destiny, to make real the promise of liberty and justice for all. Dr. King said he could not idly sit in Atlanta and remain unconcerned about what happened in Birmingham. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. The same issue faces us today. Far too often we stand unconcerned on our island of privilege, watching the less fortunate flounder amongst the seas of inequality. But to allow injustice to occur, to turn a blind eye, is to engage in a moral sin. Fortunately, the spirit of Dr. King's constant outcries against what he knew was wrong lives on today in the hearts of many protesters and activists fighting for equality. Global protests for racial justice this past summer have upended the status quo and forced us to shed new light on the fact that, while the work of Dr. King ameliorated the existing rampant racism and proved that widespread change could be achieved through nonviolent means, it did not result in an absolute extermination of injustice. Ever since the abolition of slavery, we've been on a lengthy journey towards a more equal society, and Dr. King's work covered ample ground on the ongoing marathon towards justice. However, the work is and over. The fight for civil rights will stretch far into the future. Civil pushes for advancements of civil rights are necessary to enact change. Dr. King's work has provided a blueprint on how to engage in non-violent protests and other forms of direct action to force negotiations and bring about societal improvements. Nonviolent action is necessary to start negotiations, to bypass the political apartheid gripping our government, and to force our elected officials to bring palpable change. Injustices are not present in the form of a candle that can be neatly snuffed out with one quick tap at its origin. In fact, it's nearly impossible to reach a general consensus on where the true root of the problem lies. Racism takes shape in the form of a great oak tree, its roots permeating far and wide, sinking deep into the very fabric of our society. We cannot simply reach for the base and pull. To do so would be to rip out sections of our peoples and communities that continue to stubbornly cling on. Rather, we need to work together, as both a nation and a world, to persistently extricate these deep-set issues, making sure that no remnants remain to take hold yet again. We need to loosen the surrounding soil, to open our country up to new legislation and new ideas that push for change. We need to make it clear that idly sitting by is not an option. 
Finally, we need to look to Dr. King's work as a nonviolent activist who preached love and tolerance to build a framework for our efforts to build a better world. Thank wow. You. And she's just a ninth grader. You know what they say? Children are our future. And then we can tell from the essays that we receive that they are getting engaged and they are setting the way that they want our world to be. And we need to listen to the hearts and minds of our children. So again, we thank all of the essay contest winners. And we again congratulate Maya Weeks for being our, our first place contest winner, receiving a gift card of $100. I give them another little round of applause. Yay.